hi everyone. Nice to see everybody here. This is pretty amazing. Um, for Chad and myself, who've been around WebRTC to be here down in Boston and uh, to see this kind of turnout is just really impressive. Um, so I'm, I'm very excited to be here. Thank you all for coming. Um, yeah, so my name's Chris Hopkins. I work at a, at a new startup called Cafe X Communications. We have an office on 31 Milk Street in downtown Crossing. And uh, we, like Tobias, uh, work with our partners to deliver a better customer experience, which means we're connecting um, WebRTC-based endpoints or WebRTC applications into legacy infrastructure typically, so a, a PBX, a contact center, anything. And our goal is to make that seamless and easier. So if you have a phone and you want to use the phone, you get to use the phone. If you have an app and you want to use the app to connect to someone, you should be able to use that application without a plug-in. And um, so again, our goal is to really provide real-time customer engagement solutions. Um, like Google, um, we are also looking for developers, so we're actually trying to hire in our Boston office. It's a really cool location. If you've ever been downtown crossing, it's budding, lots going on. Um, but I don't think you'll find that, that to be atypical of this space, which is that we all need very, very good talent in order to, um, in order to bring this technology forward. So, um, but uh, we're right next to the CIC annex. So if you guys are familiar with the CIC, they're building, they're building an annex right next to us. Um, and that's actually where Cafe X started, was in the labs of the um, Cambridge Innovation Center. So I'm gonna to talk to you about a case study of WebRTC that um, we have a lot of experience with. We've been working with Cisco under a brand called Mobile Advisor. And they delivered an experience uh, very similar to Amazon Mayday, where you can connect to an American Express representative with video. And uh, about anybody have an American Express card? I know probably a lot of the execs. All right. That's not surprising. American Express is the largest card issuer in the entire world. They are humongous. And they have thousands of agents to take your calls. And now you can actually go and connect to them. If you have the Amex for iPad app, you can connect to them via video and you're using WebRTC, again, through Cisco Mobile Advisor. And you can do that 24 by seven. One of the more interesting things about Amex is their number one corporate value is customer commitment. And the reason why they chose to launch video is because they believe fundamentally that by engaging someone in video, you make that interaction a heck of a lot more personal. And that's more valuable. And anyway, it saves them a lot of heartache and a lot of, a lot of headache. It is so much harder to yell at a call center representative if they're not on the phone, right? If you're actually looking at them and you see them and you realize that there's a human being and the call center agents love it. Those that get to work on video are so excited they get to talk to their customers. And in our case, we actually do two-way video because a lot of people who have American Express cards are a little more formal. They're not you know, in their PJs on their Kindle sitting on their, um, sitting on their couch. They're tending to talk about something financial, so they actually wear a shirt, right? <laughs> they engage with someone. It's a little bit more professional, just like talking to a financial advisor. Those are use cases where two-way video is extremely appropriate for WebRTC, while other ones are less formal, and one-way video may be more appropriate. And I'll talk a little bit more about understanding your application, understanding your use case. And there are subtle differences that make a world of difference in terms of how that application is received. And um, let's see, so I was talking about the agents and how they love seeing and talking to their customers. Do you know how hard it is to be a contact center agent? They roll over three times a year in their job. They have to show up at a certain time, they get yelled at all day, not much fun. But now they actually get to see some of their customers and they find that and disarm them when, again, there's a good problem and they know that they can help them. The other case is chat. Chat is extremely impersonal, right? It's less personal than voice. A lot, very, very easy to swear over chat. You know, just drop an F-bomb right through chat and the person will be on the other side and, and that poor agent, well, now they're gonna escalate to video and you're gonna see him after you did that, <laughs> all right? But let's see, so in the, so again, talking about this, this customer case study, American Express on the iPad, so there is a native WebRTC stack provided by Cafe X through Cisco Systems. And um, in this particular case, again, 
we provide an abstraction layer to WebRTC to simplify the signaling, but still leverage that same quality of video um, libraries that are inherent in Chrome and Firefox and all those other, all those other, and I'm sorry, Opera, those browsers. We also do plugins, um, like Chad talked about. So developers can absorb our SDK, set up a call very, very easily, and they don't have to get into the intricacies of the SDP and all um, the finer points of WebRTC. We try to abstract that and make it simpler. And then you, we make it simple so that you can connect into these legacy environments. In the case of an American Express representative, they actually have a big hard endpoint. They actually have a video phone sitting in front of them. It's not just a desktop where they're, um, where they're pulling up a browser on the other side. But you can engage um, directly with them in a video chat. And this is actually our COO's American Express card um, where he actually went and engaged with a representative directly. So American Express, they, they say their tagline now is inspired by you, but it really is inspired by WebRTC. So again, this is our CEO, our COO talking directly to a representative about his card. You can do this today. If you have an American Express um, gold or platinum card, you can use WebRTC to talk to these representatives. They do get calls from time to time, people just kicking the tires and talking about it. So they're, they're probably pretty used to it. We are not gonna call them tonight. You know why? It's holiday season, <laughs> and we're not going to overburden the contact center, but I will show you a demonstration of uh, the technology that they're using. So again, once you've engaged with them, they can go, they, can, they will ask you if you want to turn on two-way video so that they can see you. You don't have to do that, um, but audio is running the whole time, and uh, once you've engaged in that session, they will actually go and say thank you for using uh, video chat. And, um, and go from there. And then I think you get a post-call survey. From this case, what we learned, if you're trying to integrate into a contact center, again, very different than peer-to-peer -peer WebRTC applications, you need to introduce it slowly. You just don't turn 5,000, 6,000, or sometimes even up to 40,000 contact center agents into a new technology. They're gonna try it, they're gonna learn about it, they need to understand the processes behind it. So we introduce this technology and this, um, and this environment to the contact center very, very carefully and slowly with measurable results. Um, the other big thing is remember the agent video environment. So they typically have to change how they dress sometimes, the video agents, especially if they've been on the phone uh, for their entire careers. Let's see, because they're looking at you. If you look at the Amazon Mayday reps, they have a special backdrop in, behind them. Uh, camera placement is very, very important so that they're looking directly at the camera as opposed to looking at this screen and switching to this screen. Otherwise, it becomes more imper impersonal. They want to engage. So we learn very much about what that environment works like, how you have to change that. The other, Chad talked about knowing the network environment and the device. So in this case, we're looking at iPads, specifically iPads 2 and higher, right, all have cameras. And there are implications about how the network reacts and how WebRTC and which codecs, uh, specifically VP8, H.264, Opus Audio, all have different impacts on those different devices based upon their CPU consumption. So some will actually have lower quality Wi-Fi, which means that they'll have signaling problems. And um, anyway, the agent actually needs to be aware of that and understand what's going on. We have daily quality metrics. We need to know the quality of every call that goes through our system. So we know how well it worked, was there choppy audio, how did the video, how did the video resolve itself. Um, and the key here to also to remember is that while video makes it personal, audio is what matters most. So the audio has to be exactly time perfectly, it has to be crystal clear. If you're using Opus to another codec, um, you, and the, in the, inside the contact center, you have the ability to do high fidelity audio, which makes it sound crystal clear. That means actually using WebRTC is gonna sound better, calling from an application like this into a high definition contact center than calling an 800 number. So in addition to all the um, reasons Tobias listed, that's also something else. You're gonna not get misrepresentations, crosstalk, um, audio matters a ton. So we learned a lot about, um, about how to introduce this service at American Express. So I was gonna show a quick demonstration. Um, anyway, uh, 
I'm going to pull up the Chrome browser. So this is de um, a demonstration of our technology that we call Live Assist. It's also branded as, uh, again, Cisco Mobile Advisor. And I'm going to pull up a native iOS application that uses WebRTC. You'll see uh, we have a Live, Live Assist demonstration app that has the American Express website painted, in front, painted behind um, all of our Web, WebRTC primitives. So I can actually go and place a call into the contact center. Oh, and here's the agent on the other side actually taking that call. All right, so what are we doing here? We have live video. We also have live audio. You might be able to hear some of the feedback. Some interesting things to note is I'm actually showing a network status, and that's part of our API, right? So if there is a degradation in network quality, both sides of the call need to be aware of that. If I'm walking away from an access point and I'm talking to an agent and the audio gets choppy, I can, the agent might be able to go and say, hey, can you make sure you get a little bit better network quality? I'm having trouble on my end. Um, I, as an agent, I can have control over that native application. I'm seeing them, so if, let's say we decide to go to another part of the website, that's going to get repainted on the other side. As an agent, I have tools, so this is very akin to like an Amazon Mayday experience where I can go and, oh, sorry, I can go and circle a specific section. I can actually, um, you can see I have control over specific windows. I can pass them a document, which will show up. We can scroll together. Well, it looks like the demo gods are working. We can actually highlight over that particular document so we can focus on a specific section Maybe it was terms and conditions or a specific bill. But these are all the tools that we go and enable the agent to have at their disposal. Again, all leveraging WebRTC. And if you want to get into the intricacies of our API and talk to that, but um, for the most part, this is VP8 video that's being uh, passed back and forth. You'll notice that um, it's not a significant, it's not high definition video. Again, there's really no reason to do that in this particular case because the application is what's central to what's going on, but I'll hang up there. All right, thanks everybody for crossing your fingers for the demo gods, that's, uh, that's most appreciated. Thanks, Chris. So uh, I think, uh, is Peter ready already, or why don't we take, uh, if there's a couple, uh, we'll take a question or two maybe while we're getting uh, Peter set up. Sounds good. Here, if you have a question for Chris, or me, or Tobias. If you'd rather wait till later, we can do that. All right. All right well, well, sorry. So Cisco works with Cafe X, um, and uh, they have some of their own products that do these types of things, but not necessarily leveraging WebRTC. But it's when it's WebRTC in the contact center, they have a solution called Mobile Advisor, and Cafe X is what's powering that. So again, they're one of our core partners that, uh, with uh, anyway, between us and them. We also have other partners that use our product as well. Thanks, Chris.